Some of the works of the flesh for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of what look at verse 11 in verse 11 for he that said do not commit adultery also said do not kill now if thou commit no adultery yet if thou kill thou art become a transgressor of the law in obeying one part of scripture we do not disregard or disobey or deny the other part of scripture we're looking at romans chapter 13. in romans chapter 13 reading from verse 8 Oh, no man, anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law, the royal law. Verse 9. In verse 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, moral law, not ceremonial law, moral law. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Can we say that together? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Say it by yourself. Your neighbor starts with your wife. Love your wife as yourself. Your neighbor starts with your husband. Love your husband as yourself. Your neighbor starts with all those people your living ways at home, charity begins at home. Love those people as yourself. Your neighbor starts with the people who are physically near to you. Think in love, plan in love, operate in love. Let everything you do be of love. Not that, you know, we just have it in the head and then it's not in the heart. Love your neighbor as yourself look at verse 10 in verse 10 love walketh no ill to his neighbor love walketh no ill to his neighbor therefore love is the fulfilling of the law well coming to number three here number three proclaiming the royal law without deviation proclaiming teaching it, explaining it, expounding it, applying it, we preach to ourselves first, we proclaim to ourselves first, that fellow is a false preacher, false prophet, who preaches to other people and he doesn't preach that same word to himself. And that's how you discover false prophets. They can declare, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They preach it to others. They don't preach to themselves. It's like the husband quoting the Bible to his wife. And that same verse of scripture, he never quotes to himself. It's like the wife always bugging the husband with Bible, Bible, Bible verses. And the wife coaching the scripture to the husband and never quotes the scripture to herself. It's like, you know, the little child they're having family devotion and the parents gave opportunity uh, to, you know, for that boy to be the one that will read the Bible and preach to us this morning. And that boy takes the opportunity of being wanting to say something 
and preaching to the parents and not preaching to himself. When we proclaim the royal law, we proclaim that royal law first to ourselves. And now we also proclaim it to other people, proclaiming the royal law without division, division, without division. You know, there are times uh, if you preach of the word of God, maybe you see something in the Bible, and um, if I say it the way I should say it, my husband will say, look at that. My wife will say, look at that. So you know that that's in the scripture and you, are preach and you interpret it well. Well, when we get home, I'm going to ask him a question about that. And there are people, they will deviate from the proper interpretation and from the proper application of the word because if I read that, if I say that, that thing will boomerang. It will come back to me. Deviation, don't deviate. The word of God is higher than any man. The word of God is greater than any man. It's much, much older than any man. If he fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. Look at the first part of verse 12. In verse 12, so speak ye, and so do. So speak ye. Proclaim it forcefully. Proclaim it faithfully. Proclaim it transparently. And let the word of God remain the word of God. Even if you have to go and pray and say, those who have heard you might be wondering, uh-huh, you're preaching, but look at this, but look at that. Let the word of God be preached and proclaimed without deviation. In Matthew chapter 22, we're reading from verse 37. Matthew 22, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, this is the first and the great commandment. What's the first sin and the great sin? The inability to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. If that loving the Lord with all your heart is the first commandment, the first sin is disobeying that, transgressing that. If that is the great command, commandment that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, the great sin is that you are not doing that. And when the Lord commands you and he said, this is what to do. This is the direction to go and it is the, what to live for. If you don't do that, you don't love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And you are committing the first sin and the greatest sin. Look at verse 39. In verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy wife, thy husband as thyself. Thou shalt love thy parent, thy child as thyself. Thou shalt love that member, that friend as thyself look at verse 40 in verse 40 on these two commandments loving god loving man loving god with all your heart loving man as yourself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets what does that mean when you read the books of the law genesis exodus leviticus numbers you determine the law 
on this loving God in the interpretation of whatever you find there. And then the prophets, when you read what the prophets are preaching, and you, the prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, and Amos, and all of them, the interpretation. You must not interpret anything in those books of the law and the prophets contrary to this royal law. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mark chapter 12. We're looking at verse 29. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29, Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is here. O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, Bastachi, in Bastachi, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. All thy strength. If you have little strength, expend it. Serve the Lord with that strength. If you have greater strength, serve the Lord with all your strength. Pastor, I'm weak today. You're weak, but you can stand. You're weak, but you can walk. You're weak, and you can go to the bathroom. You're weak, and you can eat the strength that remains in that weakness. All the strength you have lived, serve the Lord and love the Lord with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no none other commandment greater than these. All those ceremonial commandments, the Old Testament, none can compare with these. There's none other commandment greater than these. Verse 32. In verse 32, and the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. Verse 33. In verse 33, and to love him with all thine heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole bunch offerings and sacrifices. Look at that. All the sacrifices you read about in the Old Testament, all the bunch offerings you read about, in the Old Testament there is nothing comparable to loving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And the man confirmed that. Look at verse 34. It says, when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. He wasn't in yet, but he wasn't far. Just because he knew that in the head doesn't mean he got to the kingdom of God just because he agreed with what Jesus has said. That doesn't mean he had entered. There are many people that will affirm. There are many people that will give accent to the word of God. Well, until you repent, until you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, until that word becomes part of your life, part of your character and part of your motivation everything you do you have not entered in yet and jesus said thou art not far from the kingdom of god we're coming to point number three now point number three 
We're looking at the renewed law of liberty for all regenerated people. The renewed law, that the law that is still there now and is renewed from generation to generation. It's renewed for everyone in the kingdom. It's not the old ceremonial law. Here is the very law of God for everyone. In James chapter 2, reading from verse 12. In James chapter 2, verse 12, So speak ye, and so do. So speak ye, and so do. Preacher, so speak ye, and so do. Leaders in the church, so speak ye. Preach sound doctrine. Don't stop at preaching. Don't stop at proclamation. So speak ye and so do. Leaders in the house fellowship and leaders among men, leaders among women, those who teach on marriage and those who teach on the family and those who encourage and counsel other people, sectional leaders, so speak ye. Don't say anything contrary to love in trying to kind of promote your position and your section. So speak ye only by the word of love. Don't speak anything contrary to love. Loving God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And loving your neighbor as yourself. So speak ye every member of the church. So speak ye. And so do you, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Verse 13. In verse 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy. Mercy, love, tenderness, gentleness, yes, affirm the truth in love. Present the truth with mercy. Hold sound doctrine with love, with tenderness, because for he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy, and mercy rejoices against judgment. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the mirror of the perfect law of liberty. Number two, the ministry of the probing law of the Lord. Number three, the might of the powerful law of life. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the mirror of the perfect law of Liberty. In James uh, chapter 1, we're reading from verse 23. James chapter 1, verse 23. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, that is, in a mirror. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. Forgeteth what manner of man he was. Whenever we come to the Bible study, was shown the mirror of the Word of God. And when the mirror is upheld before us, we see our spiritual face. We see our spiritual life. We see all the things we wouldn't have known about our personal life, about our private life, and about the things that need to be corrected. We look at the mirror. If after looking at the mirror, at the time of prayer, we don't give the time to pray. The time is there, uh, the person leading the prayer is leading the prayer, but we're not praying. We're not praying on what we saw in the mirror of the watch of God. We'll be like people who don't have any mirror. 
I read of a man who was um, a prisoner of war, P-O-W, and he was captured. And they incarcerated him and put him in a kind of room, but there was no mirror in that room. Deliberately, they did that. So that for one year, for two years, for three years, would you believe he spent 50 years in that prison as a prisoner of war? And all those 50 years, no mirror. He wasn't allowed to look at any mirror. And think of a person, if he entered there at the age of 25 and came out at the age of 75, and the first thing he wanted to see was he wanted a mirror after 50 years of being inside that place. And when he got a mirror and looked at his face, he dropped the mirror and started crying profusely because... He, could, he had not seen that face for 50 years. And, uh, you know, that, that's like people who maybe they carry the Bible, but they never read the Bible to show themselves their face, how they look before God, how they look, and they're going to eternity. And for all these many years, maybe they hear the word of God, but uh, every time they hear, they forget who they were. After 10 years of coming like that, coming like that, when one day you see your real self, you break down because you didn't know that this is how you are. That's the reason why every time you hear the word of God, look at that mirror and see what that mirror is saying about you. And then go to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb, and be washed and be cleansed so that the mirror revealing something to you will lead you to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb that cleanses your life because he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, but also looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continuous therein. He be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. You will be blessed. I will be blessed. The Lord help you to make use of the privilege of hearing the word and being cleansed in the blood of them. Look at, look at number two. Number two, in the ministry of the probing law of the Lord. We're looking at Acts chapter 24, reading from verse 24. Acts 24, reading from verse 24. And after certain days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a joyous, a saint for Paul, and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. What's faith in Christ? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Beyond that, repentance, understanding your inability to save yourself, and because of that, you're introduced to the only one that can save, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you are called upon, believe, after you have repented. And so he sent for Paul the apostle, concerning faith in Christ. Here is now the ministry of the word, verse 25. In verse 25, and I see reason of righteousness, Temperance, the self-control, and judgment to come. Felix trembled. The law of God probed him, searched him, and looked at everything in his life. The law of God spoke about the righteousness of God, the righteousness expected by God, and looked at his own righteousness and his righteousness way far behind the righteousness expected by God and spoke about temperance. Temperance, the control that begins in the spirit. 
control is not just controlling your tongue your heart has to be under control before you can control the tongue your spirit has to be under control before you can control your external life and when he spoke about the implication of self-control spirit control life control and the control of the scripture on a person's life and he spoke of judgment to come and he put him on the balances with his wife drusilla and put them on the balances and they were found wanting he trembled that what the probing of the word of god does but trembling is not enough felix what are you going to do after that will you repent Felix, what are you going to do after that? Will you make restitution? Felix, what are you going to do after that? Will you come to the fountain of the blood of the Lamb and be cleansed and be washed and be saved? It says, Felix said, he answered, Go thy way for this time when I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. He never called the people who hear they don't take action and they say next day next time i come to the next bible study i come to the next meeting that's how they postpone postpone their salvation their repentance they're coming back to the lord their restoration such people tomorrow 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 they never come and if they die before that tomorrow comes, they perish. We're, we're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the might of the powerful law of life. The word of God is mighty. And the word of God does something within us that no other instrument can do. In Romans chapter 8, we're reading from verse 2. Romans chapter 8, we're reading here from verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is so mighty, is so powerful as you present yourself before that mighty word of God, powerful word of God, and you're allowed to do a redemptive work in your heart. And you're allowed to do a reviving work in your heart. You're allowed to do a regenerating work in your heart. You will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. It will make you free. Tonight, free from all the things that tied you when you were powerless and helpless. Free. And all the things that, you know, became like a habit. And that's how you have been, how you have been. And you have been wondering, how can I get out of this? The Lord sets you free tonight. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh the lord will condemn every sin in your nature in jesus name and he will root it out you lost an amen. amen. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightier than ever before in Jesus' name. It will dwell in your heart. It will lead and control your life. And everything that you found impossible before, the Spirit of the Lord will make it possible to live a transparently righteous life, even from tonight in Jesus' name. I invite you to the Lord to tell the Lord what your need is. And I invite you to tell the Lord that His mighty Spirit and His powerful Spirit will walk in your heart more than ever before in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. He's able to help. He's willing to help. He will help you. Cry mightily unto the Lord. And don't hide anything. Reveal where you are, who you are, how you are unto the Lord. And the Lord will do the incredible, the impossible in your life. He'll make you ready, ready for heaven. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. 